Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post in our Concord, North Carolina studios. Our girl from Mifflin Town, from up at Lethal Chassis, Ashley Strummy alongside. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Doing good, Steve. Uh, Mother Nature has dumped on us again this past weekend. We got some racing in, though. It waited till Sunday, thank goodness. But uh, I don't know. It's been crazy here. Really has. It's been really, really cra crazy. And just the way things have fallen. You got into the track and got rained out, rained out early, and yeah. sun's out at 9 o'clock. I mean, good Lord. It is a nightmare to operate a track, and then you throw social media in on it where everybody's an expert. Oh, my gosh. I'll tell you what. You couldn't get me to promote a track if my life depended on it right now. It's tough business. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt about it. Hey, I'll tell you what. Over the course of this past weekend, Carson Macedo was so good to see his smiling face in victory lane. Ashley, this young man's been on quite a journey over the last month of his life. Wow. Ever since that big wreck at Knoxville Raceway, uh with a huge fire um he's that crash in turn four it just i don't know it gives me chills just talking about it anyhow uh nine races since he has been eight top ten so really good strong comeback for him but unfortunately there are two guys that are just kind of setting sail right at the moment steve yeah absolutely top tens are nice top tens are good but when you're competing with David Gravel and Brad Sweet in the World of Outlaws in 2023, which Carson Macedo was doing prior to that crash, top tens are not going to do it. Well, Carson got on his high horse this weekend, and on Saturday night at Wilmot, picked up his fourth win of the season, 32nd of his career. I think I read, Ashley, he was 50 points behind, and I hate talking points. I, I'm not a points talker until after Knoxville. But he was 50 behind going into the weekend. He's 32 behind coming out of the weekend. So seems like he's made a little progress. Yeah, those gains are big. I mean, we all can say that we don't watch points, but you know they all do. Maybe just they glance at it for a quick minute, but you know they're paying attention. Yeah, I'm not big talking about it as far as the battle goes, but it does give a good indication of performance. That's for sure. And it was good to see Carson Macedo win and have a good weekend. We'll see how he fares now as we roll into a big, big time. Do need to mention this. We are recording this on Monday. When many of you watch it, it will be after the Eldora Million. So we are ignoring the Eldora Million, but we know it's happening, but we can't project who's going to win. So just the nature of what we do here, uh, it is a big, big week. That is for sure. Speaking of big weeks, it is also the Howard Cating Classic out at Ocean Speedway. And when we come back, we will talk to Bud Cating. He joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Schatz and the rest of the World of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's get right to it. The Sage Fruit Outline joining us uh, looks like from the shop out in Campbell, California. Bud Kading joins us. Hello, Bud. How are you? Uh, good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How are things at Kading Performance rolling along? How's the, uh, how, how's, how's the speed shop business these days? Uh, busy. It's been real busy. Uh, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of sign of uh, recession, at least not in sprint car racing. Uh, people are still buying parts and, and still in a need for it yesterday. So uh, it's uh, it's been a busy, busy, uh, you know, last two or three months here and getting all these guys ready for this week for that uh, Eldora Million. Uh, we're kind of quiet right now because everyone's there and settled. But uh, so it's, it's a big time of year with Eldora, obviously, at this time of year with the Kings Royal and all that. And then coming into the Knoxville Nationals uh, really ramps up. And, uh, you know, then obviously the winter, everyone's pretty prepared uh come september they're already building stuff for next year so it's uh keeps us real busy over here with that being said bud is there any like off season for your business i mean is there a slow time of year for you guys and what you do knoxville kind of gets slow for us just because the guys are kind of isolated and got everything they need um and we have a, we do a lot of local business and guys are, are racing all the time uh, around here but uh i would say that 
December would kind of slow down a little bit, maybe the beginning of January, but then it really ramps up again there mid January. And, you know, there's just, there's some small times of the year, uh, I guess it'd be normal vacation time, 4th of July time kind of slows down and Memorial day. So, and uh, if it doesn't, we're not here. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the state of 410 sprint car racing. We're racing this week for a million dollars. We're recording this before. Some of you will watch it after. So we don't know what happens there. We had $250,000 at Houston's. We had a guy win $80,000 at Skagit a couple weeks ago. But the state of 410 sprint car racing, kind of what's your take on it uh, nationwide? Because you guys you guys have your hands in a lot of it, that's for sure. Uh, I would say it's pretty healthy. Uh, eat just our local races out here. I was at Plasterville here a few weeks ago and uh, with a two-day show, and it was sold out both days. And uh, the energy around the racing is really big. Uh, obviously, the purses are increasing uh, to an extent at, at a good part of the races. Uh, the bigger races are obviously paying a lot of money, like we got this weekend or like they had at Q6. Uh, the Skagit purse is getting better and better every year, it seems like. Uh, still, a lot of our local stuff are still racing for peanuts, but, um, you know, I guess, you know, it takes, uh, takes a village to try to get everything going. So I think uh, there's a lot of push from what's going on with, uh, with the high limit thing. I think people are seeing that. and. Uh, not so much just the high limit, but the notoriety for sprint car racing with Kyle being involved uh, to the extent that he is, I think is bringing a lot of popularity to the sport. And uh, when I was racing sprint cars, everyone wanted to be, or when I was young racing, everyone was going to be the next Jeff Gordon or Tony Stewart. Now everyone wants to be the next Kyle Larson. So sprint car racing is, you know, very, very healthy right now because of him, in my opinion. Speaking of that, the person and growing up to have inspired to be like one of these guys like Kyle, the competition side of things right now, I think, is is rather significant. What what do you think that's created this buzz around how many solid drivers we currently have across the country? I'd say 20 years ago or more, you know, there was there wasn't every car in the pits wasn't the same. Not every car in the pits um, was prepared to win the race. You know, there was a lot of guys there that were there to race, and there was a handful of guys there that you knew were going to win. Uh, now, when you walk in the pit gate from the first trailer to the last trailer, I mean, everyone there has pretty much significantly got the same stuff. You know, every, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, everything's buy it off the shelf where uh, 20 or so years ago, they were all innovators, uh, you know, creating uh, where we're at today of, of making the sport better, making the cars lighter. You know, there was no weight rule at one point and, and uh, that caught on. So then they got the weight rule and that, you know, so I think there's things like that, that uh, why the competition's so tight is because, you know, Essentially, we're all really got the same stuff now. Do you like that, or do you wish we still had some of that innovation? And 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 how do you do that? I guess is the next question. <laughs> As you know, there's no going back. Yeah. To any of it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's the same thing in NASCAR, where you see, and a lot of it is the, the competition so tight. Yep. Um, you know, with sprint car racing or any of it, you know, it used to be three tenths off, and you were eighth quick. Um, now you're, you know, a tenth off, and you're third quick. Um, you know, everything's just, I guess I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong, but everything's just really tight. You know, like the other night, I think there was 15 of us within a 10th and a half or two tenths of a second between first and 15th, where that used to be the difference between first and sixth. So, uh, that's tightened up, I think in auto racing as a whole, everywhere, the competition's better. Um, I wouldn't say it's easier to get money, but there's not a lot of poor people in racing. It doesn't seem like anymore, at least doesn't doesn't seem that way. You know what I mean? Everywhere you go, I mean, it, everything's got a carbon body, tie brakes, um, you know, new motors, a couple paid mechanics, uh, feather lights or TNE trail. I mean, it's a, it's an industry now where back in the day, you know, it was a hobby. Everything in those trailers uh, tells you to the precise amount of what you need or what you can get. But with that being said, last Friday at Ocean Speedway, you were the winner. So what set you apart from the rest of the field to pick up that win? I'd have to say experience. I mean, there's, there's a lot of youth in California, which I don't see a whole lot of that to say in Pennsylvania. There's not a lot of 14 to 17 year old race car drivers out there yet. Um, and that's most of our field out here now. It's a, there's a lot of youth out here, a lot of good guys, a lot of good racers. Um, and I ran second for a good half of the race and, and just had to restart it toward the middle of the race there about lap 16. And um, that Caden Steele from out here was leading and he just, he kind of moved up a bit early to get into the corner and I just stayed low in the moisture and, and slid him getting into one. And, and I think that was just experience really is what, what got us ahead in that night. And then 
thought we were, felt real good about it and then ran eighth the next night. So we went from, uh, you know, drinking beer and having a good time, but we won a race and the next night scratching our heads again. So, <laughs> Oh, the joys of racing. That's for sure. No doubt about it. Hey, we need to step away. Uh, hang in there, bud with us. Oh, and I'll stick around more with Bud Kading coming up in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Schatz and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline back out to California. Bud Kading joins us. Bud, we talked a little bit about that win in the 360 on uh, Friday night out at Ocean Speedway. Um, your 410 season, uh, you talk about that eighth place finish. You've had a lot of top tens, a few top fives. Looking for that first win. What's what's going on with your 410 program and what do you need to do to get up there to be smiling on, on the front stretch when we get done one of these nights? Yeah, man, if I knew that, we'd had it handled several weeks ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we just, we've been making changes and working at, at getting uh, back on the top of the podium with that thing. Uh, just it seems, I mean, we, we've been making a lot of headway, getting a lot more competitive with it. Um, then, you know, we thought we were getting in a good position, go to Skagit and then miss the show up there. And that, uh, that stung. So we had to come home and uh, do, do some research, try to get our stuff back in the game. And then we won Friday night and, I think Saturday night we had a, a lot better car than eighth place uh, there at Petaluma, but just kind of got into an incident at the start of the heat race and uh, got spun out. So then, you know, kind of moved our starting position toward the back. But, um, you know, I don't know, working on it, trying to get better as a whole and as a team, uh, making everything happen. Uh, and, and just all the all the things, you just got to put the whole night together, right? I mean, it's there's so many things that uh, that can happen just a little bit there that uh, that can put you behind it as close as racing is uh, right now. You, you can't be uh, a little off anymore and, and salvage a top three. You got to be on, on the spot all the time. Well, a big weekend coming up for the family this weekend with the Howard Kading Classic. Um, your stats at Ocean Speedway have been pretty phenomenal. Five starts, uh, five top fives, one of them being a win. So are you pretty sure you're going to pull away with a with a win this weekend? I mean, every every time I get in the car, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna win, whether I'm starting first or last. I mean, that's that's uh, I think why most of us do it. Uh, but it, it's tough, you know. I mean, we uh, we won the last time we were there, so uh, we're feeling pretty good about our chances. And and this event's been pretty good to me. I, I've won it, uh, I think, two times uh, with with a wing on, and then won it. We had a non-wing race on Friday. We won that as well. So uh, the race has always been pretty good to me. So I'm excited to get back out to it and. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We do a, a lot of work for it. Um, we have a, a party Friday night after the races uh, that's catered by High Five Pizza. Uh, my dad's got some friends from up in South Lake Tahoe, uh, the Connor Party. Uh, it's a band up there that they come down and do live music on Friday night and, and early on Saturday for the luncheon. So uh, it's a great time. Uh, it's picking up a lot of steam. That, I mean, I think when we first had this event, I think there was maybe 10 or 12 campers over in the campground and now uh, they don't even take reservations. It's first come, first serve now because the last couple of years it's been sold out. And that's, you know, it's 75 spots or so over there. So uh, it's been picking up steam. Uh, I wish we could pay, you know, the million dollar purse, but uh, we're working on making that bigger and better every year. I think right now we're, we have a, a lot of racers and I mean, I'm, I'm the guy that, that pulls it all together, but all the racers are, are really the people that support it. I mean, uh, most of the teams, you know, it's, most guys give us 500 bucks, but there's guys that give us up to five or 10,000 for the race. So we uh, we almost more than double the purse. I think right now we're 6,900 to win, um, no less than 800 to start, working on trying to make it. We're only a couple thousand bucks away, and I don't want to get to, uh, you know, put the <laughs> apple, the cart too far in front of the horse, but we're close to being 1,500 to start, which would be uh, phenomenal for for a race out here in California. I mean, that's more than it paid to start at Skagit and, and most of our big races out here. So um, my opinion, I, I've i won one of the biggest non-wing races in California several times. And I was leading the Western world down at Manzanita, paid 25 grand to win and uh, broke a front axle on the last lap. 
And I went from making twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand dollars to making twelve hundred dollars. Wow. So then I complained. I'm like, why this thing should pay twenty five hundred to start and twelve and a half thousand to win. You know, split give give the back of the guy the back guys more. And uh, then we won the next year, and now I'm pissed off that it only paid twelve and a half, and not twenty five. So um, I want you know that's what's going to get the guys to the track is the start money. So I'm, I'm trying to work on making that better for the field. What does it mean to you? This is the Howard Caden Classic. Your grandfather Howard, believe he had his ninetieth birthday, so he's still going. New bicycle. He's all set to go for this season. Of course, your dad Brent, um, the icon, the Hall of Famer, if you will. What does it mean for you, Bud, to to be able to put this race together in honor of of your family, of your heritage, of your history? When you're in a in the, involved in it, I guess like that, you don't really look at it like that. Yeah, no, you uh, don't. When uh, John Prentice from Ocean Speedway put this race together, uh, firstly here, I guess 13 years ago, uh, it was really just to honor my grandfather. You know, he's always, he's at the races, whether uh, Tim or my myself or my dad or my cousin were racing or not, he'd just be out there kind of hanging out with the fans and everyone, you know, loves him. You know, he hangs out with the mini stock guys when he goes out there and he's got friends all across the pits. Um, so it was really just to honor him and now where it's gone and become such a, you know, it's a it's a pretty big event for somebody to win out here. Um, a lot of the racers are, are, are gunning for it and a lot of the team owners. And obviously, like I said, I get, I don't know, I guess I was asked this before, just hard, I don't look at it like that. You know, I just look at it as I'm putting this event together to honor my grandfather and, and uh, trying to make the race better for the racer. and. And I've never really looked at it that way, so I don't know. It's just kind of tough to tough to describe it, yeah. but it is it it means a lot to me when I have to talk on the front straightaway and and he's standing there and you know I, got, I always get kind of choked up, uh, you know just you know he, he's getting ready to turn 91 this year and uh, you know it's you know age gets all of us at some point and uh, you know he's still out there on his bike cruising around and and hanging out with his friends and it's it's really cool to see. I, I hope I'm in that good of shape when I'm that old. One real quick question before we get out of here. Your father, Brent, inducted into the West Coast Stock Car Motorsports Hall of Fame back in June at Sonoma Raceway. Inducted with this class, Kurt Busch, Matt Crafton, Kevin Harvick, Lynn St. James, and your dad. Dude, there's got to be a lot of pride with that list. That was, it was really cool. And, you know, that, that, uh, we, we've been going down to that LA Coliseum race here the last two years. And, um, Ken Clapp had called me a couple days prior and and had said that my dad was going to be getting into the Hall of Fame, but don't tell him yet. We're going to work on this and that. And uh, so then we're down there in, in 90, 89, 90, my dad had become friends with Dale Earnhardt. And um, anyhow, they, they he ran a cup race at Phoenix. He did it with Childress. So those guys helped him with engines. Well, we were at Richard's trailer and talking with Richard and Richard goes, Oh, Hey, uh, I heard you're getting into the West coast hall of fame. And I'm like, oh, don't fit. and I'm like, yeah, I guess it is. So then Richard's like, well, I'd like, you know, Kevin's getting in too. I'd like to be out there and see you and see it for you. And so, so Richard's, you know, he kind of spoiled it for, uh, for me to tell my dad, but it was, you know, it was very honored to, to have Richard say that to him. And so was he. And, and it was good to see them at the event, him and Danny Lawrence and a lot of them guys that are, I've known for a long time, and uh, Danny's a good friend of mine. Um, and it's good to catch up with him and, and see those people out at that. Bud, it is always a pleasure to chat. Wish we had more time, but the clock on the wall says we got to get out of here. Wish you the best this weekend with the Cading Classic, and I'm throughout the balance of the season, but thanks for your time. All right, well, hopefully we can win a few more races. You have a reason for me to call you back. There we go. We'll do that. We'll talk to you some Tuesday real soon, that's for sure. Thanks, bud. Yep. Yep, thanks for having me, guys. You got a Bud Kading joining us here on Wing Nation. Stay with us more in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Ashley Strummy and Steve Post here. And uh, Ashley, always a thrill to talk to Bud Kading. Just one of my favorites. Went out there, spent some time at the speed shop. I did the HK Classic a few years ago. And 
Man, I'll tell you what, what a stand-up guy. What a what a just and what a great family. What a good guy Bud is as well. Yes, and it blows me away that Howard's gonna be 91 years old in August and still pedals that bike on the front stretch. Absolutely incredible. The night I was there, he jumped into that old super modified, and the next thing you know, he's doing donuts and sending clouds, and the place is going bonkers. So um it is a great, great event. If you're on the West Coast, Ocean Speedway, Watsonville on Saturday night is the NARC three uh, NARC four tens. Friday night is their three hundred and sixty program. So a great couple of nights of racing as well. Need to mention this also: the uh, party, the after hours party, the Benevolent Fund, the NARC Benevolent Fund is the beneficiary of that. That is a great, great cause. Great, great stuff. That's for sure. Ashley, real quick, we get a look back at last week, and I look at all the results. And here we go. Some of our regulars: okay, Mark Dobmeyer won River Cities. AJ Flick won Lernerville. Brian Brown won Knoxville. Boy, you just, there are times excellence just shines and it seems like it's a weekly thing from some of those guys. Yeah, I'm surprised you missed Macri at Port Royal. <laughs> that's about the only one we didn't have. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's about the only one we didn't have. Well, he took the weekend off. Anthony Macri took the weekend off or he probably would have gone. I don't know. Devin Borden looked pretty good. That's for sure. So it is cool. That is for sure. But I say all of that to talk about Sunday night at Houston's, okay? A racer by the name of Christopher Thram picked up his career first 410 win. First 410 wins are special, and to do it at Houston's, man, I'll tell you what, special, special night for Christopher. And not to mention, he passed Brooke Tatnell on the last, was it the last lap or coming to the, I don't even know, lap 14, I'm sorry. Yeah. But Yes, yeah. a guy like that is is kind of a huge deal. And I love that he said, quote, since I was a kid, I've been coming here. It's pretty cool. So you know that he watched Brooke growing up race there as well. Yep, absolutely. So big thumbs up to Christopher Tram, Ryan Timms, and Jack Dover, your podium finishers up at Houston. It's all right. We acknowledge this at the beginning. The million is over. Well, those of you in Canada watching on Rev, it's not over. This is where our scheduling kind of gets a little wonky. But one thing that is ready to happen is the 40th annual Kings Royal this weekend, Friday night, Saturday night. Ashley, only $175,000 to win on Saturday night. Man, after that million, that's a small change peanuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal, right? No big. Uh, it'll just be interesting, right, Eldora? Especially... I want to say this many races in in a row consecutively with sprint cars. I'll be interested to see how the track changes over the week and if we see a repeat winner from this year or we repeat winner from this uh, race or if it's going to be a new guy standing in victory lane. World of Outlaws have raced twice there this year. Rico Abreu and Logan Schuhart won. The All-Stars were there, part of Speed Week. Sam Haferteep Jr. picked up the win. But, Ashley, you talked about winning it all. Boy, last year they had the historical big one in the Kings Royal, and Brett Marks won it all. Man, if one driver gets hot this week, batting down the hatches, and, and someone's, someone's going to fill a bank up. Right, but they're still good company. Tyler Courtney won it in 2021, Kyle Larson in 2020, Brad Sweet, uh, Donnie Schatz. I mean, we can keep going if you want. <laughs> really is. A fantastic week of racing up there at Eldora Speedway. And uh, Jerry Gappins and the group up there have got the red carpet all ready. So um, I'll tell you, it is going to be good stuff up at uh, Eldora. Ashley, there's, there, there's just something special about walking into Eldora. There really is. You, you, it's a magical place, no doubt. Yes, the vibe is incredible. The vibe is incredible, that is for sure. The vibe is incredible at Eldora. The vibe will be good at Ocean Speedway. And we appreciate Bud Kading again joining us here on Wing Nation as we roll along. But more important than all of that, and we say it every week, we sincerely mean it, we thank you sincerely for joining us this time here on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.